Well, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Today's Monday, December 7th. Thank you to everyone that watched the run test video, the lactate threshold test, heart rate test, uh, FTP test, all of that. Uh, it was really fun and painful. <laughs> Took Sunday off. So today, Monday, is really the start of my season training for the Cruel Jewel 100. And today on the books, I just have a really simple 30 minute run, zone two, nothing crazy. Uh, so I'm gonna go out and get that done. But I did wanna show you guys, I've got, hold on, let's see here. Okay, so this is really exciting. This is the new Lone Peak 5, and this is not like insider information. This is actually a running store that's posting pictures of this new shoe on the internet. And this is the only place I've found pictures of this shoe on the internet. So we're gonna take a look at it real quick on the screen. Uh, this is a shoe store called Run More, and I believe they're in, yeah, they're in Maryland. Uh, have no idea how these guys got the Lone Peak 5 before anyone else. They don't come out until January 1st or right at, the, right at the end of the year. I think January 1st, 2021 is when they're supposed to come out. I don't have them yet. I don't know anyone that actually does have them except for this running store. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you take a look at some cool uh, colors, I mean, it's kind of the same yellow color that I have. The red looks pretty sweet. Uh, gray, black, a new kind of color. Uh, Ultra hasn't done this type of, what would you call this? I don't know, like tan, uh, desert sort of color in a long time in any of their shoes. Then of course, like a gray blue. As far as the women's colors go, we've got green, like gray, a lot of uh, black, another like desert color. Uh, these are kind of weird. I don't think these images are mapped properly uh, because this should be some sort of pink. I'm not seeing any pink. Pretty exciting updates. So we've got a new midsole. It's now the Ego midsole instead of uh, the old version. That, and that, that's kind of what people complained about a lot with the Lone Peak is that it just kind of felt dead. It felt like it lost its bounce after like 50 miles or so. And that had to do with the midsole. But this new Ego midsole, it's the same thing they use in like their Escalantes. Uh, so we should see a lot more comfortable rides it has a new stone guard, which I'm really excited about because I wasn't a fan of the stone guard that was kind of like split up like bones. Uh, so this one, it's just, it covers the whole footbed and it's a lot lighter integrated into the sole. So it should, you don't have to take it in and out or anything. It should be nice. Uh, but always, I, I always put the stone guards into my trail shoes if I can, if they're, if they come separately, if they come integrated, that's great. It looks like there's a few updates to the upper, a little bit less of that fake leather and more mesh which was a really good move on, in my opinion, uh, that they did with the Olympus 4s. It, was, it just made the upper a lot sleeker in my opinion, and it looks like they're moving in that direction with the Lone Peak, so that should be pretty cool. The outsole looks pretty much the same as far as I can tell. I always thought the uh, Lone Peak outsole was really great. Probably the best outsole Ultra makes in my opinion uh, for running long distances in wet, muddy conditions. They do have the King MT, but I don't run long distances in the King MT. These are some of Ultra's most popular shoes. Definitely their most popular trail shoe. And one that actually the Lone Peak, I think, I don't even know what version it was, maybe the two or something, 2.5, something like that, was my first Ultra shoe. So if you guys are interested in hearing my opinion about the Lone Peak 5, put a comment down below and let Ultra know that they should send me a pair early so that you can see them before release day. <laughs> so I'm gonna link the running store below. Go ahead and pre-order from them. It looks like they're pretty much the only place you can buy them right now and you'll probably get them as soon as they come out. I also just saw that they put out like a 10 minute YouTube video pretty much saying exactly what I just said, but you can see the shoe. So go ahead and show them some love, click on that link below. But yeah, I'm gonna go out for my really short 30 minute run. Uh, it's cold and gloomy and windy. It's basically winter right now. Fall was like two weeks long in the Midwest, but I'm gonna go out and wear an Under Armour turtleneck, John G, uh, second layer and put it on a windbreaker jacket. Over the last couple weeks, I've kind of gotten used to doing whatever I want and running faster. So I'm gonna have to keep myself controlled and in that zone two today. So that's why I'm like layering up to make sure that I'm not freezing out there. Cause when I get really cold, I'm just like, let's get this run over with. And I run as fast as I can home. <laughs> that's it, let's go.
right, we're back. Thanks for joining me on that run. Nothing special, quick and easy, 30 minutes, zone two. Uh, my average pace was 828 per mile. And just so you all know, moving forward, as I'm planning out my runs, targeting uh, my zones to hit, I'm going to be focusing mostly on power. And uh, so I'll be using my stride pod on as many runs as possible. The ones I don't take it on, like trail runs, or uh, every once in a while, I just don't feel like taking the stride pod out. Uh, those runs are gonna be focused on heart rate and I'm gonna be using my heart rate zones. But for the most part, I'm gonna be focusing as much as I can on power. It's just a, in my personal opinion, <laughs> Uh, much better way to train if you can because it's much quicker to respond than heart rate lots of other reasons so I'm going to pop over to training peaks real quick and uh, we're looking at the breakdown of zones so over here in the purple this is my power zone so we got zone one zone two zone three and over here are uh, two different breakdowns of my heart rate zones so up here we've got zone one two three and then the second chart is broken down into f uh, ranges of five beats per minute Hold on just a second, I just got an email that my Blackmagic speed editor just got shipped. That is very exciting. <laughs> but now I need to cancel the order from, it got shipped from Adorama and I need to cancel my order from B&H because I ordered two of them to see which one would ship faster. <laughs> All right, well, that is very exciting. Those of you that like video editing, all that sort of stuff, you'll see one of the Blackmagic speed editors here on this channel. I'll be using it very soon. I'm so excited right now. Oh my gosh. As you might know, I've been using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve for a long time. Absolutely love it. So when they came out with the speed editor, uh, it's just this little tiny keyboard that's got a wheel on it and all your custom buttons that you need. And oh my gosh, I'm really excited. So that's coming in a couple days. But let's get back into the run today. Here's a chart that is gonna look very confusing at first, but it's because it's overlaid with my power zones. If I get rid of this hide zones, the blue shaded area was the target for this run today. So I programmed into training peaks that I wanted to hit my zone two power. So if we look at just this purple line, let's just let's just solo this. There were a few times where I was in zone three and then I locked in and was able to keep my zone two power really consistent throughout the rest of the run. My heart rate was way under so if I was targeting zone two right from the beginning, I would have had to go out really hard just to get my heart rate up to zone two. And then I would have had to like self-correct several times to get it back down to zone two. I was pretty much fine uh, for most of the run, but it's just a lot harder to manage your heart rate than it is for something like power because your power is an immediate response to what you're doing. For me, specifically training for a hundred miler when I'm planning out my workouts, picking zones based off power is how I'm gonna do it. A lot of people have been commenting why I didn't do certain other tests, why I chose a lactate threshold test, and it's because it just simply works. Uh, there's a lot of other tests that test very specific things or have maybe an easier way to get there or sometimes maybe a harder way to get there. Uh, maybe you gotta go to a lab, get hooked up to an oxygen machine and test your VO2 max. But doing something like that can be very difficult and downright impossible for a lot of people to do. I live in a college town with a university. It's one of the most well-known research universities in the country and world, but I don't even have access, even working for that university, to go into a lab and test my VO2 max. The test I did a couple days ago, as long as you have a couple pretty basic pieces of equipment, like a watch, heart rate monitor, possibly a stride power meter, you can do this test as many times as you want for free after that. The test just works. I've done this test many times. I can go back and look at my other tests from the past. I do it with my athletes and it just simply works. So that's why I do it. Tomorrow's gonna be a little more difficult. I have a VO2 max interval session along with a strength session. So if you wanna see what that looks like, follow along and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.